In this video, we're going to talk about what's new in VX Elements 10. So to get started, the first thing we'd like to do is we'd like to congratulate Creaform for being in business for 20 years. So this year is their 20 year anniversary and you're gonna see a lot of marketing from them this year around that. So they started in 2002 developing their first handheld 3D scanner. And EMS has been selling Creaform systems for 16 years now. So we're actually one of the oldest Creaform resellers out there. And so we are very proud of them and very proud to be able to sell their products. Okay, so talking about what is new in VX10. Uh, first thing is they go, they're going to a new licensing, a new cloud-based licensing system. It's gonna make uh, updating your licenses automatic, uh, automatically detects what scanner you have plugged in and switches to that scanner and sets everything up. So they're really just trying to uh, automate the whole licensing process. Uh, next up is the ability to import multiple CAD file or scan files at one time. Not a huge deal, but it just allows you to do that. Um, and in just plain VX elements, those CAD files are reference files. Uh, we're going to go through some of the interface changes. There's been some slight changes. And then another thing is the smart resolution. They've done some improvements there just to get better results, basically less noise and just better results on the smart resolution feature. So next we'll show some of the other enhancements to VX Elements 10. So let's take a look at some of the interface changes. First thing you'll notice over here is this little box is displayed. And this contains just information about your mouse controls. Now nothing's really changed, but it is handy to have these here. If you don't want to see it, you can hit the X. If you do want to bring it back up, just click that little icon there. So left mouse button rotates, uh, holding both mouse buttons will spin the display. Pushing down on the scroll wheel will pan. Of course, turning the scroll wheel will zoom in and out. Now, if you hold down the shift key and then move over to a spot and do the scroll wheel, it'll actually zoom into that spot. This is Nice when you're working with like a large part and you want to zoom into a specific area. That's kind of nice. And then, of course, the control button, uh, control key, and then, for example, your left mouse button will select uh, information. And then if you want to unselect, this is a little uh, interesting the way it works. It takes a little bit to get used to, but you hold down the control key. You make your selection. This is for what you want to unselect. And then you hit your shift key and it'll unselect it. So you keep the control key held down, make your selection and then push the shift key and that'll deselect that area. Okay. So those are just some of the, the, the uh, mouse controls, which again, have not changed, uh, but not everybody necessarily uses all of them. And if you ever need a reminder, uh, you can bring this up. Now, we have moved the display. It used to be over here. This uh, little bar here was split uh, and the uh, it was navigation and display. Display is now moved over to here um, and you can see we've got some things here. So here's your mesh display. So you can go either flat or smooth shading. And then these are all your different ways you can display the, the mesh, okay? And you can show boundaries if you want. That's basically the edges, okay? So that's moved out here. And this is your perspective versus standard view. And then this here is new. This is called clip view. And the way this works is it's view dependent. So let's say, for example, I want to see if I've gotten all my scan data down in there. You put it on the screen. You can go to a true view or just rotate it. Get it in a view kind of normal to where you or perpendicular to where you want to cut that section. Then push the button. Uh, for the clip view and now if you rotate it you can see it's it was based on that view and you can just move this slider in and out so this is kind of nice so now I can look and see hey did I get all the scan data in there and then you can also flip the direction of it so I can spin it around 
and look at it here. So this is pretty nice, especially when you have parts that have internals. You can kind of take a look inside there and see, you know, what's going on. So that's called the uh, clip view, and you just toggle it to go on and off. And again, it's always going to be view dependent, um, so that's pretty handy. So those are the major changes to the to the display or the interface. Not a uh, a ton, of course. Um, this stuff uh, all works, uh, you know, like it normally does. Uh, viewing. You still have your right mouse click for other things like fit, uh, set your uh, center point of the view, things like that. So uh, that's the uh, that's the interface changes. All right, let's talk about alignments because there's been some major changes to alignments here in version 10. So alignments is now here under its own tab. Uh, we have some new alignments like point selection, and we have some changes and additions to some of the existing alignments. And then you'll notice here surface best fit and target best fit. Now we'll uh, show more on that later. Um, surface best fit used to be tied under the merge command. You can see now it's under the alignment and target best fit will show as well. So uh, eventually we'll probably do a video just on alignments because there's so much here and so many different ways to do them. But we'll highlight some of the new things. So for example, I want to do a manual alignment because when you're doing something like a sculpture here, it's very free form and shape. The only really, uh, let's call it primitive, is this bottom. So I'm going to show you how we can kind of use both geometry and kind of manual alignment to align something like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll create a plane on the bottom here. So I'll go under our basic entities, which really hasn't changed. And when I click plane, you'll notice here, it automatically uh, pre-selects this for me. This is kind of nice. If I were to click uh, cylinder, uh, for example, it would pre-select this one, which is, you know, based on curvature. So it does try to kind of pre-select for you what it thinks you'd want to use. You can, of course, always change it. So I'm going to sample this area in the bottom. I'm going to expand my uh, selection a little bit here, try to get a little bit more and average that out. And I'm going to create a plane because we do have this plane we can align to, but that's about it. So now let's go into the alignment tool. So we'll go into alignment. We're going to do manual alignment. And we're going to go ahead. We've got align by constraints or manual alignment. And what's nice now is you can do these partial alignments, okay? So the only thing right now I really have is this uh, plane. So we'll pick that and we'll make that the X, Y. And let's flip it so it's pointing up and we hit OK. So now if we go to a true view, we have it aligned in this plane, okay, right here. But we don't have it aligned, uh, you know, in, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, orientation this way. So let's get back to a, a top view here. And what we're going to do is go back into the alignment, manual alignment tool. And this time we're going to pick a manual alignment. And we're going to go back to that top view. And then we're just going to rotate him, okay? And just kind of bring him around so he's kind of in a view, whatever, you know, whether it's this way or this way. So I'll just, I'll, you know, kind of eyeball it because there's really no other way to do it. Um, and then we'll hit OK. So that'll put it into a good alignment for me. So if I go to different views, you can see at least he's he's kind of squared up to the uh, uh, to the uh, the axes. Okay, and again we have uh, the bottom. So that's a combination of manual alignment and and using kind of uh, constraints. But you don't have to have a plane align in a point. We'll show some more stuff here in a minute, but we can kind of combine them. So that's just a quick and easy way to use. Uh, constraint alignment and manual alignment. Of course, you can just use manual alignment and just move it and rotate it any way you want. But at least here we've locked it down to this this plane and then just rotated it around. Next, I want to show one of the alignments in more detail here, and that's the entity based alignment. Now, in the past, you could only do plane line point. That was it. You were pretty limited to what you could do. Um, now this is much more powerful. You have a, a lot more capability and a lot more flexibility. So we'll go into a little detail. So for example, this part, machine part, pretty basic. But I want the origin to be, not only do I want it to be aligned, but I want the origin to be right in the center of this hole, okay? 
So what we're going to do is create some geometry and then align to that. So first thing I'm going to do is come in, create a plane. Okay, and I'm going to pick here on the bottom. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to pick a reference plane here. I'm going to pick a reference plane here in that area. And then I'm going to create a cylinder. And as I mentioned before, it automatically changes your selection tool here to what it thinks or what would be the most common tool to collect a, a cylinder, you know, collect data to create a cylinder, okay? So I have those, and now I need some planes, and I'm gonna go, and this is new here, so you've got selecting on your mesh, you've got doing a vertex selection, you've got constructed, which I'm about to use, and then you've got just draw a line. So this is new, it's kind of broken it up right here, so I'm going to go to constructed because what I want to do is a point and a normal uh, 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 line. Okay, so what I'm going to do for my point is I'm going to select my cylinder. And then for my normal, I'm going to select, for example, let's do this one first. So what it's going to do is use the center of that uh, that axis is my, uh, is my uh, uh, plane. And then this... Uh, plane here as the normal vector okay that's why I built those reference planes so now we're going to do the same thing again over here we're going to go and we're going to pick plane uh sorry the cylinder as the uh, point and then the uh, plane three as the normal vector and that's going to give me that okay so essentially what I've now built is three planes okay uh, well, I built more than that, but what I what I was after was three planes here. So the bottom of the part, and then a plane centered this way, and a plane centered this way on that hole. Okay. So now when I go into my alignment, I'll go entity based. Okay, and I'm going to pick plane one, and that's going to be my X Y. Fit it back because it's moved off. Okay, and then I can see it's pointing down. I want that to point up. So we'll flip that. I want that Z going up. Okay. And then plane, uh, let's see, that will be plane. I want where's the orientation I want. So that will be plane four. That will be my X, Y. Okay. And flip that one as well. Okay. And then finally, plane five will be my Y, Z. Okay. So what I've done, you can see what I've done. Okay, let's hit OK. So now, let's hide our entities for a minute. Okay, so now you can see where my origin is. So not only did I put it in a, a coordinate system, but you know I very precisely controlled where the zero is. So now when we export this, or let's say take it into VX model or VX inspect, this is my zero point. I've got my X going this way, my Y, and my Z going up. So you have a lot of control now uh, with this alignment tool, okay? So with the entity base, and again, you can just pick meshes, you can pick construction, you can do a lot of things. So that's a that's a really nice feature, really improved uh, the power of doing alignments um, so that you can do a lot of your alignments right here uh, in VX Elements before you take it uh, out to either another software program or into VX model or VX inspect. All right, so let's talk about alignment methods to now merge data. So, so you can three, see here, I've got three scans and they're obviously not aligned. Now, uh, previous versions, you would go under the merge command and you would align the data and then merge it. Well, that's now been moved to the alignment tool and it's really the surface best fit and the target best fit i'm going to show both surface best fit is pretty much the same but i just want to show the surface best fit process so you can see it compared to the target best fit so we've got our scan data here we're going to do a surface bet best fit and we'll start with uh you know scan one to let's say scan two and I never use automatic. I always use manual. I just find it, it's just much faster. So uh, we'll just kind of get them in similar views. Pick three points. 
like we normally do. And they just have to be close. You're just trying to get the two close. And then we go ahead and hit best fit. And it's going to fit them. And then we'll now do this uh, third scan here. Doesn't matter how many you have. So pick the same three points. And hit best fit. Okay. And then we hit OK. So now we have our three scans all best fit together. Now we go to the merge command. And I'll just take the defaults for this. And we go ahead and merge our scans together. So there's our final result. You can see it looks pretty good. Okay. So that's nothing new. Uh, what I want to show next is the new target best fit. Okay, so for target best fit, uh, I've reopened the exact same file, same same uh, three scans. Now keep in mind for this, your uh, let's hide two of these for a minute. Uh, your your targets really need to be the same, meaning um, we scanned this on a table that had targets on the table as well as on the part, and we've deleted all those targets that aren't on the table um, because you don't want to try to be. I mean. Theoretically, you could try it, but you're going to have a lot of targets because if you flip this over, scan it on that targeted table again, you're going to have a lot of targets that just spatially are not in the, sa the same. Okay, So if you turn on these different ones, they don't have all the same targets, but they have some of the same targets. Now, where would you use this? Well, this would be really good. This isn't the greatest example, but what would be a good example is if you had like a large part, like a large metal part, you know, two, three, four, five feet long. And um, you you could be concerned about some movement of the part, right? So as you flip it over to scan it again, maybe like a sheet metal part or something or a structural part, um, because you can control the alignment some more. I'll, I'll show you as we get into this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to alignment and we're going to say target best fit. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing. We'll do one and two to start with. And what you do is you come down here and you hit preview, okay? Now, you can see what it says, unable to find enough matches between positioning models. If you look down here, minimum match points, I have set to 10. Well, I probably don't have 10. That means common targets, right? So let's turn this down a couple. Let's try eight, okay? There we go. So you can see it's found eight points between scan one and scan two, and you can see them here in red, Um that are uh, common, okay? So, but what's also really neat is you can look over here and say, well, boy, this one's out 83 micons, 80 micons, 70. Maybe I don't like some of these. Maybe I don't like those matches. They're too far out, okay? So that's what I'm talking about. Maybe if your part had a little bit of movement because if your parts have a little bit of movement and you're trying to do that surface best fit, that could throw off your alignment, okay? With targets you have more control because you can pick which ones you want to keep and which ones you don't okay so you can turn off some of these and do a preview okay and see which you know which ones now you got to be careful you don't want to go too low okay but uh but you can turn ones on so you can kind of pick the ones that are maybe just too far out and just lock it down uh to certain targets this has a, a lot of potential okay so we'll say hey that looks good and we'll go ahead and accept that and then we'll do the same thing for scan three. Let's go ahead. Let's uh, leave it at eight and do a preview. And you can see and you can see how fast it is. Now, this is a small far, uh, part, but if you're doing a big part, you're just looking at the target alignments. You're not looking at all the geometry and trying to fit it together. And we can see here that looks pretty good. Those targets are all pretty tight, so we won't eliminate any of them. And we'll go ahead and hit accept and then we'll hit OK. So there we go. We've got everything aligned. And then, of course, we just go to our merge command. I'll just take the defaults and we'll merge it together. So surface best fit hasn't changed. It's just now under this alignment tool. And now we have this new target best fit, um, which in certain circumstances is going to be really nice um, where you want to maybe only align to certain targets um, or you've got a part that's got a little bit of flex and you're worried you can eliminate some of those. And you can actually see before it does the alignment, how far out some of those are. You may find, especially if you have a part that's really got some, you know, some flex or movement to it, when you go to align them, everything is so far out, you may just decide, hey, this is just 
too much, I'm going to rescan it or redo it, you know, something like that. So, so there is our part all nice and lined up. So that is uh, a new alignment tool when you have multiple scans and you can do two, three, five, ten, 10, doesn't matter, uh, and line them up. So that is the new alignment tools. Again, you've got surface best fit and target best fit. All right, let's show some of the stuff you can do with the measure tool. Now, you can see it's it's in its own menu now, and we've got some new options here. So uh, alignment is, uh, as we discussed, uh, just all the alignment tools now, including some of the scan-to-scan uh, -scan alignments. We've got our basic entities, which really hasn't changed. But now measurement has its own tool. And one of the things you can do is just a pair of digital calipers. Now, all this is, it's kind of like taking a real set of calipers and just measuring. But if you want to do something really quick, you know, get an idea of maybe how thick something is, you can just throw up uh, these digital calipers. But let's show some of the other things you can do uh, with it. So I'm going to go to basic entities and let's start. I'm going to put a plane here because I'm going to want to measure, let's say the width of this part. I'm going to throw one over there. I'm going to want to measure the angle to those uh, side walls, throw that on. And then let's say I also want to measure uh, the distances across some of these holes. So I'm going to create a cylinder here and a cylinder there. Okay. And that's good. And this isn't even in an alignment. This is just whatever orientation I've scanned it in. You can see it's, you know, it's kind of crooked and so forth. And it doesn't matter. Okay. So let's go ahead now back to our measure tool. We're going to do distance to start. And normally you could just pick, you know, hey, I want to measure from this point to this point uh, here and it'll give you a number. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to click our constructed. So these are those new icons. So, for example, let's measure from plane one to plane two. And you can see it's going to give us that distance. Okay, we'll take that. And then let's say we want to measure... Um, from the center of cylinder one, the axis, to cylinder two, and that'll give us that distance across. And then let's say we want to measure that angle. So let's go to angle, and we're going to pick uh, plane three on the bottom. And let's say plane uh, two over here on the side. And we'll hit OK. So you can see that's 89.952, so not quite 90. Um, so you can see very quickly we can build some basic geometry and just pull some measurements. So if you're just trying to do a quick inspection of a part you've created um, and you're just, you know, just want to measure kind of feature to feature and see where you're at, you're not getting into alignments and GD and T and all that. Again, you can just build some real basic uh, geometry and pull some measurements uh, without having to go into, you know, into other software. So it's a it's a pretty handy tool just to be able to take some quick measurements. So, uh, again, the measurements, they're now in their own little drop down uh, with the uh, digital caliper, which, again, lets you just do some quick measurements. And then, of course, measurements to point to point on scan data or to constructed geometry. Something else that is new is a few improvements in the uh, in the mesh handling uh, in uh, version 10 here. And one of those is with the smart resolution. And one of the things they've done is a better job of, of cleaning up when you're when you're running the smart resolution. And if you don't know much about smart resolution, go back and watch the video on uh, VX Elements version 9. Uh, we show some of the different ways of, of doing it because it's a pretty, really neat command. Um, but uh, one of the things they've done is improve the handling of noise with the smart resolution. So uh, here's an example of version 9 ver uh, versus version 10. Uh, specifically dealing with noise, um, you're just going to get better results with uh, version 10. Now, one of the other things they've done, so if you look at this back to our little statue head here, um, 
you can see we just weren't able to get all of the areas. There's a few little holes. Now, of course, we could go in and use the hole filling slider over here. Um, but the other nice thing is now I can go to optimize uh, uh, and just hit watertight. And it'll automatically just make it watertight um, and fill it all in for us. So now when we go to do our finalize, you can see here when it's done, it's filled in those holes. Now, you got to be careful with this command. I mean, if you have some really rough data with a lot of holes and a lot of problems, um, it could take, you know, a long time to process and just, you know, may not give you uh, great results. It's not a cure-all for, for bad data. But if you have pretty clean data with just a bunch of little holes in it, uh, it'll, it'll work, you know, pretty well. And, um, you know, if we look at our data uh, with a smart resolution, pretty good, pretty smooth, um, and does, uh, you know, nice work. Now, this is a rough part. This is a small cement statue, so it, it can only do so, so much. But again, it's definitely improved uh, in uh, handling the smart resolution and reducing uh, noise. So this wraps up the video on what's new in VX Elements 10. Now, if you would like to learn more about VX Elements, more about any of the Creoform 3D scanners, if you'd like to maybe set up a demo, whether it's in person or a virtual demo, or maybe you're just looking for some engineering services, you can reach out to us. And our phone number is 877-845-2700. You can also send us an email at info at ems3d.com or in the description below, uh, there is a link to a quick form you can just quickly fill out and we can get in touch with you, understand what maybe your needs are and see if we can help you out.